Right after the U.S. elections in 2008, the Salzburg Global Seminar, assembled here at Schloss Leopoldskron in Salzburg, Austria, leading policymakers and thinkers from all over the world. And we asked them, what advice would you have for the Obama administration as it takes office? Over four full days, the group grappled with the urgency of the world economic crisis, the planetary peril of climate change, and strategies for reducing conflict and waging peace around the world. They questioned the obligations and the limitations of U.S. power and expressed in plain language their hopes for how a new administration might engage the world in new ways. Here are some highlights from what they had to say. The last eight years, previous administration have signaled an abysmal failure in the region. There is not a soft power agenda for the world which can solve all problems, just as there is not a hard power agenda for the world that can solve all problems. I find there's more dissonance than consonance. Will he be able to do this step, go towards more multilateralism, to, towards more cooperation? Uh, considering the domestic constituents that he has to face. The most important thing for the United States with the new administration is restoring the image of the United States in the world. And I think that he needs to do that by engaging more with the rest of the international community. And strengthen the relationships with key partners, mainly in Europe, but also well beyond Europe, and start to address all this huge range of issues in a much more consensual and... Uh, collective way than has been done in the past. The biggest challenge for an Obama administration will be restoring America's credibility, uh, moral authority uh, into the world. Sometimes U.S. has the conviction that I'm the most powerful country, <laughs> so I can do what I wish. That kind of mentality I believe is obsolete. Probably the message it needs to put out first that it is willing to live as an equal in a community of nations. If the United States comes in with, um, unfortunately, a know-it-all attitude or what is perceived as a know-it-all attitude, then that tends to create a certain sense of animosity. Whether America can afford its role as the, the global superpower anymore is, I think, going to be a rising issue. We need multilateralism. We need international cooperation. We need solidarity to meet the common challenges. Take this opportunity that you have in your hands to actually uh, recover, regain uh, US leadership in the world and engage with all the countries that are here wanting to, to do things with the United States and who are basically waiting for the U.S. to, to take the lead in, in, in making a big difference in the world. Restore what has been a constant of uh, U.S. policy from the time of Truman and Eisenhower onwards. Every administration, with the sole exception probably of George W. Bush, has tried to strengthen European integration, has regarded European integration as good news for the United States, and they've been right. So on the one hand, it's about who the United States is. Um, on the other hand, we know that we can't be successful on our own internationally. That's so that we have and want to work with the United States. And what's important for us is to together um, see how best to address the challenges. Then my advice would be to push on with the global round of trade talks, the so-called Doha round of trade talks. Addressing failed state, because in the long term they are really uh, breeding ground for uh, terrorism. If you remember, Al-Qaeda started using where? Somalia. So uh, I think that's the threat of the uh, failed state. I think we have to deal with the climate as an important 21st century task. It is a world task, but I think the United States must take a lead role. This might be a time for the US to say, look, you know, here are all these problems that we have to sort out collectively. Uh, we want everyone else to come along with us 
you know, we will, we will help lead, um, we will help coordinate, but everyone else has to do their bit and kind of throw down the gauntlet to the rest of the world and particularly to Europe and say, are you actually prepared to help or not? You saw the incredible reaction he got when he spoke in Berlin uh, just during the campaign, hundreds of thousands of people. Now, I think if I were sitting in the White House, I would be thinking, well, could we have staged similar events to, to that Berlin speech in the rest of the world? Use Obama's popularity to appeal directly to foreign peoples rather than just doing traditional diplomacy, government to government stuff. Obama will have to deliver first and foremost um, on domestic issues, on economic issues, keep some of the promises he has made during his campaign. The expectations of President-elect Obama and his team are very high. Uh, a lot of people are looking for very uh, for quick fixes, you know, for, for things to happen at, at, at a fairly rapid pace. So he will definitely will have to compromise to some of the issues that he probably otherwise would deliver. And so certainly there will be, there will be some uh, disappointments. What can go wrong? These are the pitfalls. Iran, Afghanistan, Russia, North Korea. I think the main thing is not to expect this honeymoon to, to endure indefinitely, uh, to realize that people will become disillusioned. There seems to be some sort of like loss in, in terms of like self-confidence. And uh, they feel a little bit lost in the world. And uh, certainly, I would like to reassure the United States, uh, the people of the United States, that you have plenty of friends in the world and you have plenty of allies. It's just a matter that sometimes you really need to engage with them and you really need to talk to them. And friends sometimes say things which uh, hurt. Or sometimes they, th they say things that you may not like to hear, but because they are friends, they have to say it. And you have to listen.